I speak tonight on the treasure that is Christ. We summon all Christians to slow down in this fast-paced and other directionless life and fast from the unnecessary things that distract us so as to heed the call of the Lord that is a wake-up call for the soul. This wake-up call is accompanied by the message that the Lord proclaims through the lips of the prophet. Return to me. If we have to return, it means that we have wandered off. Each season of the Christian calendar is a period of discovery. Within each new period of time, a rediscovery of our life's direction, of our journey's destination, and of the treasure we seek. In life's journey, as in every journey, what really matters is to not lose sight of the treasure. During any journey, if we are distracted, we will not get far. So we encourage all believers to ask themselves whether they are seeking the way forward in the journey of life, whether they are satisfied with living in the moment, or if they are thinking only of feeling good, solving some problems and having fun. Where is the path? To what goal am I directing my life? What is the treasure from which I seek? You may ask when you are distracted from the goal. Is it the search for health or wealth or companionship? Could it be a search for possessions or just well-being? None of the above. For the Lord is the goal of our journey. We are not in the world for these transient items, for the Lord is the goal of our journey in this world. All righteous paths lead to him. Think of the markers you see in the church throughout the year, each a small guidepost, each set at a crossroads, showing us believers the way to Christ and the way to the kingdom. For example, the mark of the ashes on Ash Wednesday is such a sign that helps us to find our direction. It is a reminder that of the many things occupying our thoughts, which we chase after and worry about every day, nothing will remain. No matter how hard we work, we will take no wealth with us from this life. Earthly realities fade away like dust in the wind. Possessions are temporary. Power passes. Success wanes. This culture of appearance that is prevalent today, which persuades us to live for passing things is a great deception. It is like a blaze that once ended, only the ashes remain. Now is the time to free ourselves from the illusion of chasing after dust and for rediscovering that we are created for God, not for the world, for the eternity of heaven not for earthly deceit, for the freedom of the children of God, not for the slavery to things and to money. Prayer unites us to God, charity to our neighbor, fasting to ourselves. God, my neighbor and my life, my life are the three realities that do not fade away 
in which we must invest. We are invited to focus, first of all, on the Almighty in prayer, which frees us from that horizontal and mundane life where we find time for self but forget God. Prayer invites us to focus on others and then through the charity that frees us from the vanity of acquiring and of look and of thinking that things are only good if they are good for me. Finally, prayer invites us to look inside our heart with fasting, which frees us from the attachment to things and frees us from the worldliness that numbs our heart. Prayer, charity, fasting. Three investments for a treasure that endures. We need direction so as to reduce the risk of being distracted by outward appearances, by money, career and hobbies, all things that can enslave us, cause us to lose direction. Whereas if our heart is attached to what does not pass away, we rediscover ourselves and are set free. In, in self-examination, to prepare for a full and total reconciliation to God through Christ, it is a time of grace that liberates the heart from vanity. It is also a time of healing from addictions that seduce us. It is a time to fix our gaze on what abides. Sisters and brothers, Christians all, we encourage you to fix your gaze upon the crucified one. Jesus on the cross is life's compass, which directs us to heaven. He is the greatest treasure in all the earth, above and below. From the cross, Jesus teaches us the great courage involved in renunciation and urges us to free ourselves from the clutches of consumerism and the sna snares of selfishness, from always wanting more, from never being satisfied, and from a heart closed to the knees of the poor. When you are never satisfied, there is never anything to be called a treasure, for all that comes your way will never be bright or shiny enough, and never meet your unbounded, sin-filled needs. It is difficult to live as he asks, but he leads us to our goal. And if we take the path of love, then we will embrace the life that never ends. And we will be full of the simple treasure that Christ brings, joy.